Times rolled up into one. Yeah, this is a Wizards of the Coast second outing in their uh, Xbox Arcade and PSN. PSN. Uh, Duels of the Planeswalkers 2012. Of course, we had the first game, which was actually fun. It had, had some issues, but <coughs> Duels of the Planeswalkers does fix those issues. It basically puts you in the footing of a Planeswalker. You go through different challenges. You fight other planeswalkers using a set of pre-constructed decks, mm -hmm. each one based on a different planeswalker. Each set has its own unique strategy to go along with it, as well as unlockable cards that allow you to somewhat customize your deck. Yeah. And this one also ups the ante with putting in an arch enemy mode, which is really interesting. Yeah. Uh, a so couple... Yeah. So, so, so uh, a few... So, <coughs> at, so you get a lot of Bang for your buck here. It's about like what ten? It's it's, it's ten dollars in terms of Microsoft points. I don't know about PSN. Probably the same. Uh, probably I'm I'm saying about the same. It'd be silly if it was more. But you get a lot here. I mean, you get uh, ten decks. I think so. Uh, roughly, roughly ten decks, and each one has sixteen unlockable cards. You have three modes. You have the regular mode. Arch Enemy, and then Revenge. Which is a harder version of the campaign mode. So you, you'll you easily get uh, your money's worth out of it. Not to mention a, an online mode. Yeah, and you can play your friends online. Play your friends, you can do Arch Enemy online as well, which mm -hmm. has a new element to the game. So I, they did up the graphics a little, not horribly <coughs> too much. Yeah, you know, it's a card game. Uh, the graphics, not that big of a big deal. deal. Uh, they did improve the ability activation just system. The, just the overall interface <coughs> is improved a bit. It's smoother. It's a lot easier to activate abilities. Uh, in the first game, I could never figure out how to activate an, an ability. In this one, you just <coughs> enlarge the card, and it will automatically have the ability highlighted, and you just push the A button. It's really intuitive, and it's really easy. Another good thing about this game is that it showcases a lot of the cards that are going to be released in 2012, which comes out in a couple weeks. Yep. So you get an early preview of some of the cards and some of the potential strategies to go along with this new set, which I do like Jace's new deck that has to do with illusions that get their new lord. Yeah, I'm digging the illusions. Uh, Soren Markov showcases the bloodthirst ability that of vampires course, will have. Of course, just like the first game, Soren Markov, the biggest pain in the ass to beat in this whole game because of his <laughs> stupid-ass vampires. <laughs> and the final boss in this one, as opposed to being Nico Bullis, is uh, Karn. Uh, uh, in, well, uh, Nico Bullis is the main boss in the Arch Enemy. In Arch Enemy, I mean, it's Nico Bullis, but in this one, for the single-player campaign... It's uh, Karn. Karn. Yeah, it is Karn. And he showcases a lot of the new cards as well, like the new Quicksilver Amulet. <coughs> uh, and the uh, the artifact that comes in for zero and it taps for one blue. Yeah, I don't know if that's actually going to be added in this new set, but I it's an... I severely doubt it. <coughs> yeah, but it's an artifact that costs zero and it basically just acts as a land. Uh, there were... It's basically reprinted cards from... That are... their. uh... No longer yeah. in print. From what I've seen, though, the set still has like 40 cards left to be released as part of the spoiler list that I've seen. Could, so. could these artifacts be back? I highly doubt it. And if they do bring it back, I'm pretty sure they'll restrict them to one a per deck. Yeah. So, um, overall, though, the only downside, really, is that the decks... It's not like you can go in and make your own deck. You have to really go by the constraints of what the game gives you. 
I think that's a strength and a weakness. It's, it's a, a strength because you know you're always going to be on par with the enemy. All the decks are relatively even. Any deck can win against any other. Yeah, I, I think it. I think the, the great strength is is that your enemy and you are basically on par with each other, like you said, and that the, you're, you have a chance of losing. I mean, it if, comes all after that. It really comes down to how lucky you are with your draws and your skills as a player, and how and how you implement the use of those cards. And and it's a weakness is that you don't have as much control over what you have in your deck. That yeah, help your you strategy. Know, once you start unlocking cards, you can kind of take some out, add some in, but really you're still restricted to just these specific cards for this specific deck. It's not like I can go in and make my own blue-white deck. Yeah, it's not like you unlock every card in the game, <coughs> and then you get like an uh, interface that says, okay, now you can make your own deck. No. That's you know, there. that kind of s stumps you a little bit, but it's not too bad, you know, because like I said, all the <coughs> decks that you are given work well. I, you know, I think in a future uh, <coughs> release, that should be something they should include as like an unlockable, where you unlock a, a, a new area where you can make your own deck. Yeah. Where you got like a lot of cards to choose from. Not not too many, but you know, enough to yeah. make a really... A decent deck. A, a deck that you want to yeah. have. Overall though, you know, we've had a lot of fun with it so far. <coughs> Some of the challenges though, really obscure to solve. Yeah. They, really tough. They really make you think that and then, solve them. And you can already tell there's going to be DLC for this. They're going to, like they did with the first game, they're going to add in more more game modes, more decks for you to unlock, more cards. I hope a new game mode is that they allow a player to be the arch enemy. As it stands right now, the way the arch enemy works as a single player is it's you and two CPUs that work with you that you get to choose who who you want, so always have Soren Markov, and I recommend at least Chandra or Jace as your second ally, because they are really good, <coughs> against a arch enemy opponent. So you can have two friends be the your, your two allies, but right now the arch enemy is only restricted to as a... Computer. Computer. I'm hoping that soon we can get it to where it can be another player. But overall, you know, I'd say really good purchase. It also gives you a pretty good preview of the cards coming out in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's def definitely worth your, your time and money. I mean, it's an easy 200 points if you care about points or trophies. Yeah. It's, they're all easy to get. So it'll improve your gamer score. So overall, definitely worth a purchase. As far as Magic the Gathering goes, it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. If you like Magic the Gathering, get this. We guarantee you'll probably enjoy it. All right. So I think that's all we had time for. I think that's all we really need to say. Save. Yeah, there's not much else to say. Thanks for tuning in, and hope you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't like it... Okay.